My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The wooden boat experience. Sparkles, how are you doing? <laughs> Did you just fall down? <laughs> Welcome to episode 40 of the Wooden Boat Experience. <laughs> Next week, episode 41, is going to be our last regular episode until the fourth week in July when we will resume. But don't worry, until then we will have live feeds. I've got a bunch of stuff to do around the house and on the farm, some things to build, and I need some time off from the editing because it takes a full day each week, pretty much usually all day Thursday and into the night. So you'll still be getting some wooden boat experience. It'll just be a little bit different. And I'll let you guys know next week, at least a tentative schedule on how that's all gonna work. The water is pretty nice. It's a little cold when you first jump in, but after you're in for a minute, it's not bad. So many of you are probably wondering, what the heck happened with the Chris Craft? Well, I haven't forgotten about it. And I will circle around back to it soon. But right now, I'm enjoying the water. Still getting tons of footage, as you'll see today. And getting some work done on the skiff, because I'm anxious to start rowing that around this, what's behind me is Chippewa Bay. Over here is Atlantis. That is Twilight right there. And right in there, is the Chippewa Yacht Club. I think the oldest yacht club in the country. And where the village dock is. And then down that way is Duck Cove, where we keep the boat. And there is Speckles looking at me from up high in the Lyman. Hello, Speckles. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. So I'm glad you guys could join me. And we will get back to regular things. But right now it's summertime and we're gonna seize the moment and we're gonna have some fun. So I hope you guys will stick with me and enjoy episode 40. How you guys doing? That thing looks awesome. No. I'm usually in there. <laughs> My neighbors always text me and they say, oh, did you see it out there? Well, I'm sure a bunch of you are saying, hey, hold on, what was that boat? Well, you'll find out in a bit. But first, let's see what I got done this week. And now we have a pretty clean bilge on a boat that's in good shape. We replaced one strake, you can see up there, last year. But generally, this boat is real good. Okay, keep it in mind that this boat was cleaned out. The bilge was vacuumed out last spring, so about a year ago. And uh, maybe a little earlier than this. I think it went in, in the water a little earlier last year. That's quite a bit of stuff. Ignore the stuff over here, because that's stuff from the motor cover, but that's the amount of stuff, the pine needles and different things, because I cleaned this, this vacuum cleaner was totally clean before I started. And that's a boat that's clean and in good shape. So imagine what you would get out of a boat that hasn't been cleaned a year ago and is not in good shape. Because one of the things I'm convinced about when I clean these bilges is that a lot of the stuff that's in the bilge, besides oil and stuff that falls into the boat, in the summertime is pieces of the boat, little pieces of oak from the ribs, pieces of the strakes, all sorts of things like that. Rotted pieces that have fallen in there. It's part of the boat that you're sucking out of there. This is mostly stuff from nature. Dale and Susan own Duck Cove Cottages where I keep my Lyman. Years ago, Dale made a number of these fiberglass hulled, wood decked St. Lawrence skiffs. This one I now have 
had electric propulsion added, I'm changing it back to human. Okay, everybody, here's a tip that's gonna save your future self speckles. Do you mind? I'm trying to record a video here. A lot of aggravation. This screw that I'm pulling out after having to drill off the head, and luckily it didn't mess this up, unlike that one over there, is not put in properly. When you put a screw in a hole through something that's gonna be held down, and the screw, like this one, has threads all the way up the shank, so it can't slip. You have to drill this hole going through the object being held down a little larger than the screw so the screw can slip. There's no advantage to having the screw be threaded into this hole and the, the hole below it. In fact, it's going to cause you problems. A lot of problems like it just did me. When you try to get it out, it's gonna be very hard to turn out, especially if this wood has swelled. Speckles, please stop for a second. So you need to drill this hole a little bit bigger, let it slip through, and that way, when you tighten this down, you can actually draw this piece into the other one. If it's, if it's threaded here and threaded at the bottom, when it hits the bottom, it's going to leave a gap in between the two. It can't draw it down because it can't slip on this hole. So also, when you're going to do something like this, either countersink this so the head sits flush. Don't have the head of the screw go down below the surface of the wood, or you end up with these when you try to take the screw out. There really wasn't much that I could do. It's just, it's really hard to deal with it. I'll fix that hole, but I could have saved a lot if either that was flush and use an oval headed screw that's just kind of rounded or use one of these, these little trim washers, which look nice when they're tightened down. And you can get it in stainless like this or in silicone bronze. Just a little tip to save your future self or the next person to work on a boat, a lot of aggravation. These right here are gonna be an absolute nightmare. And I, I'm trying not to tear this up, but they're sunk way down in, they're filled with varnish. It's, it's just not gonna be good. Wish me luck. Not quite finished, but that's enough work for today. You can see that's what it looked like when it started out today, this whole side. And this is what it looks like now. A little fairing compound to take care of a couple of these little scratches like this one right here. And this part will be ready for paint. We also have to fill these holes in with some cloth and resin. We'll take care of those. Well, here we are back with the total fare again. And now we're doing it on fiberglass. I know I said it out loud. The hull is fiberglass. So let's put some of this on here. A little bit of a countersink here. We'll give the epoxy some, a place to grab onto. Epoxy is not magical. So when you can, you've got to help it along. Now these are pretty small holes I'm filling in. If I was to just put this on the surface and that was it and not force it into the hole, and it is a through hole, it's not just a divot. You know, it's not just dug down in, you can go all the way in behind this fiberglass. So what I'm gonna do is put this epoxy here. I'm gonna pull the trigger a little bit, force it in, and then while I haven't released the pressure, I'm gonna ease back a little, give it a little extra, and then I'm gonna ease the pressure. What I'm hoping is happening is some is squirting through there and going beyond the hole and dripping, forming like a mushroom head, almost like a rivet. And then on this side, I'll just scrape this off, making sure that it's touching every bit of the epoxy and gel coat out here, because that's what this white stuff is, gel coat. And now we've got sort of a rivet, because this is a countersunk head, so the epoxy is bigger on this side. Hopefully it's dripped over at least on the bottom of the other side, and each side has a head on it. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Pressure in, pull out a little bit, release the pressure on the gun, gives you enough to fill the spot in, scrape it off, and go both ways so, so it's attached all the way around. Each of these is gonna get a piece of wood behind here. 
which we will attach with some small screws. We'll epoxy that in place and then we'll fill this afterwards. Well, this one here is a bit of a pain because you got to reach through this spot underneath and then over a support board in there. And there's no way that I can screw it and hold on to it. So I added this little temporary deck screw, which will help me hold this in place while I put the screws in. Then I'll, once it's epoxied in place, I'll just take this deck screw out and I'll be like it was never there. All right, I got a brand new thing of Thixoflex. Putting the tip on. I always try to do all the stuff I'm going to have to do for a couple days with epoxy. I try to line it up all together. So that's why I made sure I got these things ready and when I really just today had to do these holes, but I said, let's get it all done. Because, you know, these are, I don't know if you buy a couple of them, I think they're $1.25 each or something. So you're, you're spending the money on the tip and also whatever gets wasted in mixing here. So might as well not waste it if you can. Now this uh, Thixo Flex has been sitting in the boat shed, which is really warm. So it just flows like crazy, which is awesome. I gotta grab a piece to get rid of the first couple inches. The first couple inches aren't recommended to use, so, cause it's not, there's a worry that it might not be thoroughly mixed because of its trip up through the tube and everything. So you can see there that all of a sudden it's not just the one, but it's a pasty look, which means it's mixing together, which means we're all set. So this one I didn't remove all the way because it's hard to reach. So I'm squirting this behind there pulling it a little bit to keep it from dripping. I want to make sure I get everything here. Release the pressure on that. Pull this in. real cob job we've got one flat head and one actually it's not I don't even know if it's a Phillips head it might be a Frearson but these are old screws that had still had a decent head on them and that I pulled out of things and why buy a new screw if you can reuse old screw in a situation like this that it's just going to be hidden underneath epoxy and fairing compound so that one is in place. We're gonna add a little more epoxy here, fill up that hole where the screw was. This stuff is going to cure pretty quick today because it's pretty hot outside. Release the pressure on that so it's not still squirting out. You really want a good um, caulking gun for this Thixoflex. So a little bit more sanding and probably these spots where I added the, where I had to fill the holes are gonna need, they're definitely going to need another layer of fairing compound, but this is getting very close to being painted and doing the inside will be even quicker. So I'm pretty excited about this. I can't wait to get out on the river in a St. Lawrence skiff. Amazingly, Dale still had a brand new set of oars in his attic. In between things, I stacked up some white oak, installed a cabinet in the boat shed, and worked on the other skiff that's outside. We'll see more detail about that next week. Right now, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to see what I did for fun the rest of the week. Oh, and don't forget, we're going to check out that mystery boat in detail. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, 
absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. If you guys head over to glassgoat.com, you're going to find our rocks glass, our stemless wine glass, and our pint glass, all with messing about in boats on them, plus our leather covers, which snap onto the pint glass, but also will set on top of the other glasses and keep the bugs out of your drink. And our leather coaster also has the quote on it and our cool bracelet, which is made out of leather as well. So check out glassgoat.com. And now, remember that mystery boat? I bought it from a woman up on Little Birch Island. Her father had ordered this boat through from Adams and had it built over the winter and was the first owner of the boat in 1950. Adams, the maker of the boat, his father was the chief mechanic and boat builder for George Bolt. And when Bolt died, he and his son went into the boat making business as well as working for Hutcherson and Fitzgerald and Lee. How many boats did they build under this name? Under Adams? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. There's a few around that I know of. They were a, a build to order boat company. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> 